When Evil Dead came out in 1981, it quickly became one of the most influential horror films of all time. Its sequel, or as some like to call it requel, Evil Dead 2 came out in 1987, and completing the trilogy was 1992's masterful Army of Darkness, cementing these films in the comedy horror hall of fame. The latest installment of the franchise, Evil Dead Rise, <laughs> tells the tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons, thrusting them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family matters imaginable. Please welcome to the South By Studio, the legendary team behind Evil Dead, writer and director Sam Raimi, star Bruce Campbell, and producer Rob Tappert, and they are joined by the new film stars, Elisa Sutherland and Lily Sullivan, as well as writer-director Lee Cronin. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Nice to be here. That's all the time we have, by the way. That. I was just Go like, see the movie. Wow. It's awesome. So uh, I wrote that synopsis that you just have to read out. So apologies. did you like that? Yeah. Yeah. You did good. Thank you. Thank Sounded you. Better than this is why head. they pay me the big money. Yeah. And the big money is one falafel sandwich a day, and I'm grateful. <laughs> and I'm grateful. I was there last night. Last night was the premiere at South by. I told you all. I'm a, I was a fan. I'm in the line. People were excited, but people also said this: "It's better not suck. It's better not suck." <laughs> And it was the most fun I've had in the theaters, especially since the pandemic, in years. It was buzzing, people applauded, they were there throughout the end. Question, that was last night. How do you all feel, finally, putting it up in the screen and seeing it with that crowd at Austin? Lee? Wow, uh, I'm, I'm, my head is uh, still moving in a variety of directions. You know, you go into a screening like that with, with hope. I heard the Austin crowd was great, so we kind of, we were hopeful that we were bringing the movie to the right place, but I don't think any of us were prepared for the level of response. Um, it kind of felt like being at a rock concert. You know what um, it proves though? It proves that, first of all, thanks to Warner Brothers for going theatrical because it was not right, it was originally yeah. because the pandemic and theaters yeah. were very iffy. So we're very grateful for that, but it proved, last night proved that certain genres really function best with a crowd. Mm -hmm. And with comedies, that's great with a crowd, but horror is the same thing because it's a communal feeling of right. being scared mm -hmm. to death together. Because <laughs> yeah. it's okay, because that guy's scared too. I saw that guy scream like a girl, and I don't even know that guy. That, that's like actually exactly what happened with because I was telling uh, Alyssa and Lily, were like, in, in the movie, I don't know if you all heard it in the, in the front, there was literally a woman who said, yeah. no! Don't open the door! <laughs> and then I was like, well, if she's doing it, I, I have permission, I'm like, don't do it! Yeah. <laughs> There are a lot of yeah, people that right. don't I mean, want I mean, people were cringing. I'm like, listen, if the lady next to me can cringe, as a grown man, I have permission. It was, the communal experience of horror, yeah, I yeah. think, is something, especially with the pandemic, we for, I forgot. Like, I mm -hmm. forgot how cathartic it could be. Mm -hmm. And Sam, seeing this vision, you all have been at it for 40 years. Seeing Lee take this vision and bring it, uh, as the as someone called you the OG and Bruce is like, what does that mean? What's an old guy? Yeah. Yeah, old geezer. But I'll call yeah. you the Godfathers, the Godfathers, the seasoned veterans. You like that? <laughs> sure. Uh, how did it feel to see this vision with this generation, with these actors, with this crowd? It felt like I was a composer of a little ditty, a little song 40 years ago with these mm. nuts, Bruce and Robin, to see a masterful craftsman like Lee and his team of expert actresses take it and make a full symphony out of it. And you recognize, oh, I understand those little notes, I recognize them, and, but he's expanded in, into a right. beautiful movement. And here where we had a little dip, he's made it sad and, and richer. It's, it's quite an unusual experience, very fulfilling. I, I want to talk about that because it, you have some of the, the old nuggets for the old fans like us, but it does go into some new directions which I thought was moving. I, I, my review on the Twitters, because all that matters is the Twitters. <laughs> right after I was sitting there, I said, I, without saying too much, I said, I'm going to quote, I said, Evil Dead was great. Absolutely brutal, but with heart. And a cheese grater. I and I left that. it at that. <laughs> uh, and Lee, uh, you're an Irish lad. I'm a son of Pakistani immigrants, and yet we share in common something, Evil Dead. Around the same age I was reading, you were eight or nine when mm -hmm. you saw the first Evil Dead. Perfect time to see Evil Dead, by the way. It, it is. is. Oh, oh, uh, it is. Just, uh, it's a right yeah. 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 I was nine when I saw it while I was visiting in Karachi. I had nothing to do. I'm like, Evil Dead, let me rent it. <laughs> and I was horrified. And naturally, I said, must see Evil Dead 2. <laughs> when saw Evil Dead 2, just like you and our parents, being the cool parents there are, I think they gave up on us. They're like, it's over. Let's yeah. not censor them. They crossed and the line. And then I, you're welcome. I was one of the, uh, the, the few people who saw Army of Darkness in the theater. So my $4 went to you, Rob. Wow. Uh, Oof, yeah. And, and, I, and I took my wife, my poor wife, to see the reboot 10 years ago. I said, it's a love story. And <laughs> just to get her in. And she looked at me halfway through. She goes, I love you very much for making this movie. But it had an impact on both of us. But talk to us about the impact the movie had on you as a nine-year-old boy. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and as a filmmaker. Yeah. And the, just the art, you, you, this is a safe space for sentimentality. Just the fact that you're here Are you asking next to, to these. You can cry. Because <laughs> so, I felt like you wanted to cry a few times last night. Oh, I did, yeah. They're te- vodka tears. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the, the movies, it's something I've spoken about before. The movies hold a very great place in my heart. Uh, I, my dad showed them to me on VHS, the one and two back to back. Um, and when I was eight or nine, I was obviously very impressionable. I didn't know what I was watching. I didn't know what I was experiencing. And then in my early teenage years, I went back to those movies as I started to you know, want to become a movie maker and understood the true importance of them. You know, I see them as a cornerstone of American horror cinema, of worldwide horror cinema, and what the guys created, you know, from next to nothing. It's a beautiful story. A bunch of kids in Michigan. Yeah, ha- hanging up sheets and, you know, to show rushes and whatever the hell you guys were doing and probably selling things they shouldn't have been selling. But it's like, um, you know, it's a great journey and it's, it's, it's super... Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A- auto parts. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Auto parts. Lead. Um, but the, uh, you know, and... and just, I think there's, there's no escaping uh, the virtuoso that Sam is and, and what he brought to the screen. So young in his career and so early in his career, that allowed the camera to be something like a character. And I remember, I haven't told Sam this one yet, but I remember being about 13, buying my first camcorder and getting a piece of wood in my garden and attaching strings onto it to try and do did the, the rush cam. four shot through my oh. garden. I did a really bad job. But thankfully all these years later they gave me money to do it a little bit better. So. <laughs> yeah. You broke that, the camera. You're like, helped. Dad, yeah. uh, I need it again. Uh, but it's not just Sam, it's Bruce and Rob. It's of the course. three stooges and that's a compliment uh, who did this together. And we're gonna get to the, the Godfathers in a second, but this new generation. So you're watching this movie. And you're like, all right, what are they gonna do? And without giving too much away, it starts off with the old tropes, Cabin in the Woods. You're like, oh, Cabin in the Woods. You subvert it without me saying too much, and it takes place with a family. It's very intimate, and the theme of motherhood is present. And I'm like, oh, that's a really refreshing twist. Motherhood, guardianship, protectorship. Uh, it, it's something different. It gives it that heart, and, and the stakes are raised. And speaking of guardians, I should say, uh, Lily, you inherit the boomstick. Uh, <laughs> and you, know, you inherit it from Bruce, uh, but you take it within the same universe. And without giving too much away, there's pressure with this role. Whoever picks up the boomstick and the chainsaw, it's a, le- it's a 40-year legacy. And that plus the emotional dimension of this character, how'd you prepare for it? Must be like, no pressure whatsoever. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to the gym at 3.30 in the morning, doing push-ups. I mean, to get One a his abs. push-ups, I hope. <laughs> for Bruce's abs, right? You're like, if, uh, if I go. But seriously, yeah. though, actually, fitness-wise, to do an Evil Dead film, it's like. Physicality. Film, it's, a, it's a real thing. I'm used to wearing a corset where your breath is shallow, and you ask three questions, and then you have to go lay down. But actually, to get a chainsaw above thy head was not easy, because we used a real one without all the sharp, you know blade um but yeah there was pressure but also i feel like you guys let us just go and i Mm. feel like the way we shot and like that set became a stage and we shot in chronological order and it was mess and chaos and fun and an intense collaboration of all artists because with horror more than any other genre it's such an intense five-legged race of all departments that if one falls everyone falls so acting almost comes last it's it's it interesting you said that it was chronological i was really surprised by you said in the q a and i think that mm. makes sense because it's very intimate i can't believe i'm using this reference it's like a theater piece mm. evil dead rise is like a theater <laughs> it's piece like a, uh, it's like a one-act play broadway coming to broadway, coming yeah, to come, broadway. no but because it's an ensemble piece <laughs> it's claustrophobic and i think the decision to make it in chronological order mm. It really makes sense because it, it tightens up. The movie just gets more and more intense. Plus, there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. and if you go in order, yeah. I think it's way easier to keep track of the crap that you're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's also Cottage very expensive to clean up the mess that we made. Yeah. Exactly. 6,500 <laughs> really gallons You've got to leave it blood. behind you totally. and then keep on going. We would wrap yeah. certain rooms. We're like, and this is the last time we'll be in this room now. And then we get into the hallway, which, you Burn know, it down. Is its own thing. But you speak about the physicality and, mm-hmm. and the physicality and how, at least as a viewer, I saw there was very deliberate intent your role, Alyssa, and your physicality matches the intensity and the horror of the movie. The more your character devolves, uh, the, uh, That's a good word. you like that? Yeah, uh, and either you're the, uh, give you a compliment, you had immense range. You're either the worst or best mother of all time. Totally. But here's a compliment uh, to you, since you're compliment, because the leads were so good, the movie would not have been good without these two leads. Correct. I think yeah. we all agree. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, doing research, and I was watching uh, the YouTubes, as one does. <laughs> and first of all, I'm like, she's Australian. What? 
These Aussies are taking our roles. But a couple of months ago, you were talking to my friend <laughs> Waleed Ali in, in Australia. Ah. And all brown people in the industry know each other, by the way. <laughs> okay. all related. But I was learning, you're like, I hate horror movies. I'm like, of course, the person who hates horror movies leads Evil Dead. Yes. But I was watching it I yesterday. I hate them. I'm just an easy scare. And I, we all I'm, are easy I'm scares. too sensitive for them. But I was watching your performance yesterday <laughs> and the physicality. For anyone who's an Evil Dead fan, Bruce is underrated. His physical performance really makes the movie. But... I was watching some of the things you were doing with your body and I was like, stunt double. And then Lee does a full shot. I'm like, oh my God, she's doing it. Uh, and for a person who doesn't like horror, and I was like, she's modeling this after the silent, silent horror stars because so much of his expression and body movement. How much did you choreograph that with Lee? Because I personally think your de-evolution and your body physicality matches the intensity of the movie as it progresses. Mm. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely compliment. Um, I wish I could say that I watched those silent horror films and that's exactly what I was doing, but it's not. <laughs> um, I, I did a lot of... Um, <laughs> I put together a playlist of some kind of crazy instrumental weird music for myself and I spent... Um, I had like two weeks in quarantine when I first landed in New Zealand because we were shooting during a pandemic and I was locked in a room, literally, for two weeks. And so I spent a lot of time um, with this music and just moving around and sort of creating a character through movement and sort of building some muscle memory. And I referenced... Um, I found a really cool dance clip on YouTube that I sent to Lee. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. yeah, and it, that was sort of a like an inspiration for me, this weird choreography of, of sort of interpretive dance. Um, and so that was kind of the starting point for me and everything built from a sense of movement. It's the first time I've done that with a character. Um, mm. Other times it's been like an accent that kind of gets me into it. Um, but this was really inhabiting like a creature um, yeah, from the inside you should, out. Once the movie comes out and it's a big hit, you should release that dance video, and I think it could rival the Wednesday dance for being maybe viral. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we could re-perform it right now. Yeah, let's do it. I we'll have, the okay, but yeah, I, I have video of me in my hotel room in New Zealand. Um, can I spoil anything in this interview? I will say not a word, uh, but... <laughs> There's, Go ahead. Go ahead. There's, Go ahead. A, there, there's a shot of me getting out of the bathtub in the film. Everyone and has I, to watch. Yeah, we've seen that in the trailer. I have, it's okay. Okay. I, I have film of me practicing that in like red plaid flannel pajamas in my Put that on the YouTube. Yeah. And I'm like to see that. sliding off the bed <laughs> and like, <laughs> like doing this stuff. And I ended up giving myself carpet burn. So like I, I turned She out. suffered for her <laughs> art lead. <laughs> the pain start, they pain suffered. Start early. I was carpet burn on my cheek. And it was like the first week of filming. And, and my makeup, I was like, what did you do last night? And I was like, I was practicing a stunt. But the <laughs> legacy that you did, literally putting your body in harm's way, you know, Bruce, you did that. I mean, I, I saw the behind the scenes making of the original Evil Dead 40 plus years ago. And you were a bunch of kids. You didn't have stunt doubles. It's like, Bruce, we run into that wall. So there was no so pads. Rude. Yeah. And we, we, we were like, well, what's a pad? I mean, we didn't, <laughs> you throw yourself against the wall. Yeah, that fucking hurt. Yeah. It, it, Probably should hurt, you know, I, I don't know. It was only years later where we look back on that shoot and we're like, oh, that was not a normal shoot. <laughs> not in any way. But without way. That, that, that was the legacy of it. And you know, speaking of legacies, I was remembering Carrie Fisher one time they were interviewing her and towards the end she said, listen, I'm Princess Leia good and Carrie though. Fisher. I'm Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia. That's who I am. All right. That's how it's going to be. Uh, and for many act, thank you, thank you, Academy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but for many actors, they spend their career saying, ah, oh, I want to get away with it. And I feel like you, you've embraced it. You've done a lot in your career. But you will always be known. Yeah. As Ash. Yeah, Ash thanks. will always be known yeah, as Bruce Gamble. for summing up my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I was reading about Identity. Bruce online for moderating this thing yesterday, and I came across a great quote from Bruce, and it's true, and it's going to be true for um, Lily and Alyssa, is that there's an echo of Evil Dead in anything I did after that. Mm. So Ash follows you no matter what, even all the way to Hallmark. 
Yeah. <laughs> Even Hallmark. I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about You're not about it. it because, but it's one of those things where some actors like, I've, I have more range. But like, and then other people. You know what I found? It. I am more stereotyped by fans than my own industry. Hmm. I've done a French film. I've done a Western. I played the King of Thieves on Hercules and Xena. You know, not a drop of blood in sight. But fans only watch what they watched. Like, if you watch Burn Notice, a number one show on cable for years. Uh, if you don't like, it, it, if you watch that show, you're not necessarily going to watch Evil Dead. I, people found me retroactively from Burn Notice. They're like, mm. oh, God, that old guy did these weird movies like <laughs> decades ago. You prefer a themed seasoned veteran sure. here. <laughs> that's what I knew you from first. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. But, but it, conversely, if you're an Evil Dead fan, you might not like spy shows. So... Plenty of my fans have not even seen the other half of what I've done, but I, I, I don't, like I do Hallmark movies now, so I'm not I'm not stereotyped in my own industry, which I, I is love, great. I love it from Michigan, playing Ash to Hallmark movies. Hell that, yeah. that is arc. That is arc. <laughs> Look at that range. Yeah, that's range. Uh, whoop, whoop. That is Bubba <laughs> Hotep, Bubba Hotep, <laughs> Ash, <laughs> Hallmark. You just just drop the mic and walk away. Uh, okay, see ya. Now, Rob, speaking about the origin story, I uh, was reading that. I, I didn't know that that you were actually roommates with Sam's older brother, mm -hmm. Ivan. And I was, and you were on, on your path to becoming a respectable economist. And you, you look at these sliding door moments. That was just an unrespectful. And now he's now he's just a very successful <laughs> producer, yeah. married to Zena, uh, Lucy Lawless. Oh. <laughs> uh, but you think about the sliding door moment with with time, you get mileage and you get perspective, right? You ever sit there and think, if I wasn't roommates with. Ivan, and I didn't introduce me to these wacky kids. I could have been in the, the advisory council or, or in the UN or had making a job. Had a there. job. I, I go back and think <clears throat> there was something that guides you through life, even though you may not think it. Somehow the computer puts Ivan and I on the same floor in college. And that was something was meant to be. Artificial and, intelligence yeah. put you guys together. Or, or dumb luck. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was the moment. Yeah. That was the moment. Well, really, it was meeting, and then I met Sam through that. Was he was amused me when I'd visit Ivan with his big dice game, trying to uh, an illusion that got me every time. Uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for those, and uh, he's still tricking it. And then, still he up, and then he came up to Michigan State. We were in a class Shakespeare together. Um, it was back in uh, ancient days where you were allowed to smoke in class, so we kind of sat in the back. <laughs> old the school, yeah, old, old school. school. And um, we. Uh, I said, let's make a movie together, and we made a movie about kids on a college campus. Did very well. Then Sam, that summer, made a movie about big kind of big dumb comedy unrelated to the university. Ran that the following fall. It um, took in like five dollars and cost twenty five hundred dollars. And um, and you went, learned what it's like to be a Hollywood producer. Yeah, that's right. That, right. Was, <laughs> that was the lesson. Right. Know there. your audience. Yeah. And we and uh, then we went down. And on that movie, I met Bruce, and all three of us left college and. Made a little, tiny, tiny little short to hone our uh, Sam's craft of making a scare, and then we made like a 30-minute promo piece to show to investors that um, we could scare the, an audience. Ran it in front of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, not the right crowd at midnight <laughs> screenings back in Detroit. Um, but eventually, put the money together to go and make a movie, and then through this whole process, during the editing process. Um, we went to New York, and the assistant editor was Joel Cohn, and we got to be good friends with his brother. Oh, the Cohn brothers, the up-and-coming brother. filmmakers. Yeah, up, potential. And they, well, at, at that time, they, they, they saw that we had done it. They had just worked with another guy, and they couldn't believe that these three chuckleheads from Michigan had raised money. So they said, how'd you do it? Okay, we're going to follow. And they did. They went and shot a little short that starred Bruce. What they did is they, they shot it in 35 millimeters so they could show it to investors in a movie theater, and they did it like it was the trailer, like the movie was done. Mm -hmm. It was a brilliant sales job. I'm in the trailer. I'm the guy in the field getting hit with the shovel. Well done. Uh, do I make it? Into, the rest of the career. Yeah. Do I make it into the feature? Oh, I guess I was busy uh, that weekend. Uh, but yeah, it was. A, so they did it a and, different and way. And from those humble beginnings to to 40 years of a of a of a franchise that has spawned TV shows, the video games, new generation. I mean, it's really remarkable. I love the origin story. Just a bunch of kids with an idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, it's been interesting. Since we've come out of pan the pandemic, we've had 50 plus interviews here. Instead of snark, which is people traffic and snark a lot, people have been sentimental a lot. And so I'll be sentimental if I can, because <laughs> it's the movie with heart. Uh, I'll say it quickly. Uh, Sam, 
One of my favorite movies is Dark Man. You gave us Dark Man, you gave us Evil Dead trilogy, Hot Sucker Proxy. I think these are underrated gems. Uh, you've given us these fantastic roles. Uh, Bruce, when I was a kid, when I was 12 years old, I mentioned the story to you all. Uh, the internet was just starting up. I Googled Bruce Campbell because I was such a big fan. I went to his website. He said, contact me and I'll send a signed photo. I'm like, he never will. I put in my name and my address. A month later, in a brown manila envelope, black and white photo, Bruce Campbell's headshot signed to Wajahat. Sam, would you pass it? So I want to thank you. And thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I prefer Venmo. The, the children use Venmo now. Yeah, sorry. And then I'm sorry, I'm OG. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely over my time, but uh, Sam, because I, I felt like Lee was going to cry. Felt, it was such a great response. What did you see in Lee, and what do you want to say to this team that has carried this vision forward? I saw in Lee a great craftsman. It takes another plumber to recognize a good plumber. You've got to be able to know, you know what type of pipe to use, the, uh, the gauge. The I recognize a good, a good weld mm. that another plumber makes. A lot of people can't, but if you do that yourself, you really see the art and the care that goes into it. And I saw that in Hole in the Ground. And then he, I really liked him. He's funny and sweet and lovely. And then he said he was going to make it about family. And I knew that his, as his strength as a writer, that he would be super successful at that. And obviously, because he's a great director, he casts so beautifully. He brought the best talent to really make these characters deep and meaningful to each other. And so the audience connects with it. But what did I see in Lee? I saw a great guy who was a very, very excellent craftsman. And it shows in the screen. Uh, I'm a fan. I was critical. I'm telling you, I'm not just being nice. The movie's excellent, and Warner Brothers will be rewarded for finally releasing this on the theaters. Give it a round of applause to the Thank Evil you. Dead Thank crew. You. Thank you. It's so good. Uh, and with heart and a cheese grater. And with heart and a cheese grater. Coming up later today, we'll be talking to musician Peter One and Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner. Our studio interviews are also streaming live during the event on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SXSW. I'm your host, Wajat Ali, and thanks for watching.